Welcome back to another one of our videos on APPs. So again, my name is Mike Wang. I'm a neurosurgeon at the University of Miami. I'm representing the American Association of Neurological Surgeons. And these videos are intended to stimulate interest as well as provide useful information for folks who are interested in becoming APPs, essentially nurse practitioners or uh, PAs, physician assistants. So today we are joined by Elba Vaban. Elba is one of our inpatient uh, ARMPs, and she takes care of our patients in the ICU and on the ward, uh, generally after surgery, right? Yes. Yeah. So Elba, we can talk about a lot of different things, but I wanted to focus more on what it's like when you actually make the decision to try to become a nurse practitioner. So let's okay. say you're a nurse in ICU, and you want to start that process, like what kind of exams you take, what kind of... Uh, kind of applications you have to send in, how you look for a school, and maybe just start from the beginning. So you're an ICU nurse and you're interested and you've committed and you've got the, the commitment financially and emotionally that you're gonna do this. Right, so um, I guess it, it depends on what sort of advanced practice you wanna undertake. If you wanna become a nurse practitioner, um, you have to apply for a master's degree. So you start applying for master's degree programs, um, they're, they're generally not specialized. There oh, are- So let me back uh -huh. you up. So this assumes you already have a BSRN, right? A bachelor's yes. in RN. Okay, so yes. some people listening might be CNAs or might be RNs without a bachelor's, right? Okay, okay. So there are programs where you can have, you have to be a registered nurse to apply for a master's per degree program, but you can apply without a BSN. You just oh. have to do a bridge to BSN and then you'd progress through the master's program. And in some circumstances, now you can progress through a DNP program, which is also a doctorate in a clinical practice for advanced practice nurses. Um, so once you've selected your school, you sort of have to keep in mind what track you want to do because not all schools do acute care, family, or geriatrics or neonatal depending on which track you want to do so once you've selected your track you would then endeavor on finding a school um, once you have a school in mind you apply to the program it's very similar to applying to your undergraduate degree um, there's an application process fees associated with your application process and an interview process and once you get into school you register for classes it's about a year primarily of like didactic coursework but then once you start getting into um, clinical courses, for nurses, you're doing your clinical courses at the same time as your didactic. So it does consume a lot of time, but it is possible to do while you're employed full-time or part-time, at least for nurse practitioners. CRNAs are required to like not work while they're, while they're in school. Did you work while you were in school? I did, Okay. I did. Um, so is there a test you have to take, like like an SAT, ACT equivalent for this? No. So they're no. going off your grades from college? Yes, or recommendation letters from, from you know, your supervisors or managers. Um, so that's, that's how you apply for your master's degree. So I imagine it's competitive, right? It is. It is. What, what kind of tips and tricks or what kind of ways do you think that, that applicants are being evaluated, if you will? I think... Um, years of experience in, in clinical work are probably used as factors. Um, things that you do outside of work, if you're engaging in research or projects, like quality improvement projects. Um, I think to a certain degree, you know, what hospitals you've worked at, how long you've been employed at those hospitals, and obviously how well you performed in your undergraduate program. Mm, okay, great. So there, it's possible for someone who's straight out of nursing school or someone who's been in practice for 20 years to still apply, right? Yes, yes okay. it is. And so uh, you apply, you go to school, and then tell us a little about what it's like in school. So in school, it's interesting because you're in school with a wide range of expertise like a, a very varying degree of knowledge like I, I there were you know girls that did labor and delivery in my program and there was also a woman that was like 90 and getting a nurse practitioner degree because she was gonna go do missionary work with her degree so you know it's just like a wide range of what you do and there are gonna be courses where like if you're an ICU nurse you really feel like the coursework is fairly easy for you whereas if you've worked in a clinic your whole your whole practice is just a very different focus on patient assessment pharmacology um it's a lot of work um going to school and working full-time but you can 
choose your track like I slowed down at one point and was going to work to school part-time um, so that I could stay working full-time so it really it's flexible as is I think a nursing career in general is very flexible um, so you can slow down your course load so that let's say like when you're doing clinicals you're not taking like an additional didactic course where you have more papers due etc which is what I did once I was in my clinical phase um, but I mean it's it's very doable because if you are employed in a let's say in a hospital setting your your coursework is sort of applicable to what you're doing so it's it's almost like you're building on what you're already doing. And if you have a BSRN already, mm -hmm. what how many is it how many years is the minimum or maximum for this process? So it depends on what track you select. Yeah. So family NPs I believe is still the longest track because you go through the the lifeline. So you have to do infants, peds, labor and delivery, adults, geriatrics. Whereas the acute care programs are only for adults, so you don't do the pediatric component or the labor and delivery component. Um, probably the shortest nurse practitioner tracks are 18 months to two years, okay. and the longer ones are like two and a half to three years. Okay, so it's not four or five or six years. No. Yeah, okay. No. And then you finish school, so you graduate, mm -hmm. and then you want to start working. So what do you have to do then? So once you graduate, you have to sit for boards. Um, so you, there's two certifying bodies, um, the AANP, which is the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners, and um, the ANCC, which is through the American Nurses Association, is the American Nurse Credentialing Center. So those are the two bodies that um, have board exams that you can test, and then once you have your board certification, you have to apply to your individual state for licensing. Wow, so there's a lot of steps to go through. There are a lot of steps. Yeah. Like the anxiety builds and once you're done, you want to start working. But there's still, it's probably another like three to four months between the time you sit for boards, you apply for a license, and you actually have a license in hand. And then there's the whole process of gaining experience. Like I'm looking at some right. orders practitioners here. They're yes. licensed, but they're still going through almost, a, it seems like a year of onboarding, right? Right. So the onboarding process, depending on where you decide to work, can be lengthy. Um, it's also, I, I would say it's a bit more difficult because once you become a mid-level, you're relying on the experience that you've either had during your clinicals or you're relying on the experience and the relationships that you've formed at your previous employment in order to get a job. A lot of people, you know, they are training you and you're a new graduate, but they want you to have some sort of experience. Mm -hmm. And so you do kind of come to a crossroads where you're like, do I stick with what I've been doing or do I try something new? Some people get lucky and they have the opportunity to go into dermatology or something directly from the ICU right. and other people don't. Now I'm guessing that uh, the majority, maybe 70, 80, maybe more percent of nurse practitioners and PAs are, are women, right? Right. And uh, many of them of childbearing age and have mm -hmm. families and responsibilities and yes. maybe they're not independently wealthy so they right. can work, right? <laughs> right? So can you give some advice to the people listening out there who are considering very seriously to take this major step, mm -hmm. right? It's a big mm -hmm. investment and, and I, I would think it's a worthwhile investment, but you know, it, it's intimidating, right? Right. It is an intimidating step. Um, it's definitely a step you take in your career when you're ready for more independence. Um, and when you're comfortable forming more of a relationship with the medical providers and not not so much at the nursing level. Um, but I think it continues to be a very flexible extension of your career as a nurse, where as a nurse practitioner, you can start to work per diem at places, or eventually you can start to travel, you can work locum tenens, which is like short contracts, um, or you can choose to be employed full-time or part-time at, at different locations sometimes. Sometimes people are employed part-time at two different locations. You can do home health care. You, you continue to have that diversity as a nurse practitioner that you had as a nurse, um, except that you're probably, I mean, from a financial standpoint, you're making more money. So if you're investing eight hours a day into your career, you're making a, a financial improvement, um, but you also have the flexibility maybe to work fewer hours and make the same amount of money. 
Well, I can say uh, as a fact, having uh, worked with Elba for a number of years now in neurological surgery, that Elba uh, has tremendous judgment and experience and uh, the judgment part is really critical and I, I think Elba, I can speak freely and say that you've saved many lives here at, at our hospital just because you made the right decision in a timely fashion when other people maybe weren't as aware of the scenario so we're, we're indebted to you for that service. Um, I would direct those of you who are interested in the neurosciences uh, maybe upon completion to the AANS, which is uh, www.aans.org, which is the American Association of Neurosurgeons. Again, we work in conjunction with APPs and are very excited to try to enhance your education. Please have a look at some of our educational products online.